Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to be walking you through activity 4.5, CAMS in Motion. Um, this video series, I suppose, is what we're, that's what we're going to do. You'll notice I'm in Autodesk Fusion 360. I have already created a folder called 4.5, CAMS in Motion by clicking on the New Folder button and naming it. And then I'm going to go into that I'm going to make sure that I'm working within this area for everything that I do. Okay, so that's the first step is to create that folder and make sure we're going. We're going to start off by creating four CAMS. Okay. The four cams are going to create here, here on this drawing sheet. Um, what you'll notice, though, is that none of them have fully dimensioned parts on them. They don't tell us the diameter of any of these particular shapes. Okay? They tell us a few things, like, um, for instance, they tell us that the material is 3 16 of an inch thick. We know that we have a hole where the axle is going to go through later on. That's 3 16 of an inch. And then the only other thing we're given is the diameter. And they've labeled a D here. We're going to label it DIA because it's a little bit easier. Okay? But what we know is that we have a diameter here. It could be any size. They don't tell us. We're going to start with just a basic, like maybe one inch. That's an easy number to start off with. Um, but what we want to be able to do later on is adjust it, okay? Because this is going to be part of the automata project later on. It's going to fit inside of a box, and the size of the box is going to dictate how large that diameter of that cam is going to be. Smaller box means we need to shrink the cam down. Bigger box maybe means we want to make the cam a little bit bigger to create some bigger motion, right? So we want to be able to adjust things and scale them up and scale them down easily. And this is a fantastic use for what is called a parametric equation. Okay, we're going to use parametric equations to build these things. So let's get started. We're going to come over here and we're going to start. We're in a new model, right? And before we go and do anything at all, we're going to modify and click on change parameters. And it's going to bring up a table. Okay, the table doesn't have anything in it because we don't have any dimensions, but this is going to be a dimension table. It's going to have every single thing that you do in this entire part file listed here. Okay, and we're going to spread a little bit. There we go. I want to be able to see the plus sign. Okay, we're going to click on plus for user parameters, and we're going to start off by entering the three things that we're given. Here's the first thing that we know. We're going to type in DIA to represent the diameter. The expression is just going to be a number for now. Let's just type in the number one. Okay, we got to start with something. So the expression is just one. And the comment we're going to put in is nominal diameter. Nominal meaning like the named diameter. Okay, I'm going to leave that up for a second. Of course, you can always pause in this video. But if you go back and wonder why I named it that, it's because it says D is the nominal diameter of the cam. So I'm just following the naming convention on this uh, drawing sheet. Okay, I'm going to click OK. It's going to pop up. There we go. We now have a parameter. That is, we have a dimension. The dimension is DIA is the name of it. Expression is one inch. The value for now, calculated value is one inch. And the comment is just the name. What does that actually represent? That's the nominal diameter. We're going to click and we're going to add another one. Okay. This time we're going to name it hole. And what we know for the hole is it needs to be 3 16 of an inch thick. Okay. Or, or, excuse me, big around. This is what the axle is going to go through later on. And we're going to name this then hole for axle. Okay, that's the comment we're going to put here. We're going to click OK. And we're going to do one more. We're going to click plus and we're going to call it thick. Okay, and the cam thickness they told us was 3 16 of an inch. Now I'm just going to name it and make sure that I put a comment in so I know what it looks like. Okay, so here's what I have so far I have DIA, I have hole, and I have thick. And those three things are all given by expressions. And they have a calculated value given the expression. And we have a comment to just kind of help me keep track of what actually I'm talking about. Just in case you have more than one diameter or more than one hole on a part, you know, you want to be able to know what you're referring to. Okay. So again, pause if you need to, but I'm going to click OK. This is the reason that I did all of that. Okay. I can go in now and I can click uh, New Sketch. I'm going to sketch on this plane. I'm going to hit C for Circle. C is circle. I'm going to click, I'm going to drag out, and I'm just going to type in, instead of one inch for the diameter, I'm going to type in DIA. It says user parameter, DIA. Click there, oh, DIA. I'm going to hit enter, maybe a couple of times, hit enter. There we go. Okay, so I hit enter twice. But now it says I have a circle, and it says the dimension. I'm going to drag this off to the side to be easier to read. The dimension, the diameter of that circle is now FX, which is a function. Diameter is a function, and it is a diameter of one is what the function is resulting in. Okay, now I'm going to click L for line. I'm going to drag from the center point. And I'm going to go straight down. 
And according to this, this is what I know. I'm going to go a quarter of the diameter down from the center. Here's my origin, okay? And I'm going to go a quarter of the way down. So when I come back to my dimension, I drag straight down without clicking. Instead of typing in a number, I'm going to type in one-fourth times DIA. Okay. Notice when it turns black again, black is a good thing. That means it recognizes it. If I put in DI, it's like I don't know what DI stands for. So it's red until it becomes recognizable. Hit A. Ah, recognizable now. Hit enter. Hit enter again. Hit enter again. There we go. Okay. And I now have a line. The distance between the center point and the center of the hole is a function that results in a quarter of an inch. So why did I do that? Before I go any further, okay, I want to show you just the whole point of all this. You don't have to do this. Just watch, okay? I can come up here later on, though, and I can say, you know what? The diameter, I need that to actually be two inches, okay? And look what happens. This is two, and this readjusts automatically to a quarter to a half inch, which is a quarter of the diameter. If I made this uh, 0.8, this goes to point two. So we have two dimensions that are linked together now, and they will scale up and scale down automatically. This is a fantastic way to design anything. Okay? That way, if you want to make an adult-sized chair, a kid-sized chair, you change one number and everything else can change with it. So back to this. Okay, I'm going to click on this line. This is where you need to start coming again, coming along with me again. Okay, Click on this line. I'm going to hit X. That's going to turn it into a construction line, which means it's not part of the actual shape. It's just a line that's there for reference for dimensioning. Okay, I'm going to click C for another circle. I'm going to draw a circle. And this one, the diameter of the circle is just hole. We named it earlier. Hit Enter a couple times. Now I have a second hole. The diameter of this particular hole, if I can get this out here, right? is 3 sixteenths of an inch, no matter what. I'm done, okay? I'm ready to now extrude the shape. I'm gonna click Stop Sketch. I'm gonna bring it up to my home view, and I'm gonna hit the keyboard shortcut E for extrude. The shape that I wanna extrude is this profile. I'm gonna take it backwards instead of forwards. Notice it changes into negative, but instead of having a number here, I'm just gonna type in the word thick. I'm gonna hit enter a couple of times, and I have a cam. An eccentric cam that's created. The eccentric cam is exactly like the one that we see here. It meets all these requirements of having a nominal diameter. The distance from here down to the center of the hole is a quarter of the diameter. It has a 3 16 hole for the axle and it's 3 16 thick. If we want to, we're going to click A for appearance. We're going to scroll down here and we're going to find all the plastics. And you'll notice there's a bunch of plastics here in this folder. This is an opaque, so it's not see-through. And just pick a color. Let's, co let's color this one red. Okay, let's make our eccentric cam red. Let's click Save. Call it eccentric cam. Save. And you're done with your first part. So that's it for the first video. I'm going to create three more videos. We're going to move rather quickly through them because I'm not ex going to explain parametric equations in the next ones. I'm just going to show you how to build and how to add the formulas in so that you can have four working, or four working cams for your automata project and really for 4.5 cams in motion.